I love trash to treasure videos and it's been a little while since I've done one on my channel so I thought this would be the perfect time to make one. there, my name is Yami, I am your Latina next door, welcome back to my channel. I love making my home beautiful by creating high-end home decor and DIYs on a budget. If you enjoy videos like this, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. In this video, I have several types of containers that I have left over from items that I have previously purchased. And instead of just throwing them away, I decided to go ahead and collect them over a small period of time and then create useful and beautiful things out of them. And I thought I would share them in case you had several items like this in your home and needed some ideas before considering getting rid of them. So let's get right into it. Now, when I first did the intro to this video, I was only gonna do containers, but I will be doing other things in this video other than containers. However, if you happen to be Puerto Rican, you might recognize this can. These are little florecitas. There is a farmer's market nearby where my parents live and they are able to get them here locally, which is kind of nice because it brings me back home and my kids get to experience something that I used to experience when I was little. So they come in this can and it's actually a really nice can. So I thought I would change it up a bit and I picked up this macrame yarn and this is actually from Amazon. I don't do any macrame, but I do like doing things with thin rope and yarn and lots of different materials. So I thought I would give this one a try. It was a little bit thinner than I had hoped, but it still worked out anyways. Now, as you can see here, since this is a perfectly good container, I did want it to give it a makeover. So I decided to wrap it around in this macrame yarn. Now, what I like to do is I like to fray the end and hot glue it on the bottom. As you see here, I will not be showing that when I stand it up and everything so you won't see it. But that's how I'm going to start it. And then I am just going to hot glue it all the way around the tin and get it up as far as I can. Now, because hot glue doesn't really stick that well to metal, I did have to continue adding glue continuously as I kept adding more rope onto it. So I didn't really skip any sections without any hot glue. So you're going to have to have a lot of patience as well as trying to get the rope as tight as possible together. And so what I always find whenever I hot glue to a surface that's kind of hard to stick to, I like to angle my glue gun to where it touches the medium on the bottom. So in this case, I like to angle my hot glue gun towards the previous rope so that not only does the rope that goes on top of it stick to the metal bin, but it also stick to the previous rope line that was there. I hope that makes sense. So I'm not going to lie, this did take quite a while, so watch Netflix or listen to a favorite podcast during this time. Now once I get to the very edge where the lid is going to come down, I don't go all the way to the top because I want to make sure that the lid fastens onto the tin can as good as it did without any obstructions. So I'm not going to take it all the way to the top. I wanted a small handle for my lid, so I went to my leather scrap stash and picked up a small piece and cut it down to size. Now because the leather was so stick, it was not going to stick to the top of the tin, so what I ended up doing was scoring a line with my box cutter and then coming in with my screwdriver and my hammer and made an opening so that I can stick the leather strap straight through. Once I pulled it as much as I wanted through, I took some Gorilla Glue that way I could adhere the leather pieces to the tin top. Now I did add some tape so that it would hold it down while the glue dried. Once that was secure, I added the yarn around the handle and began to wrap it around the tin lid as well. 
And so my plan for this tin is to house some of the extra paint that I have lying around and just keep it out of sight. So for my next DIY, we're going to be using this container that housed some whiskey. I don't know why it is, but a lot of whiskey bottles come in really pretty containers and you don't want to throw them away. So it had a lid and I'm going to take it off and I'm just going to use this part. So what I need to do is I need to hide all of the lettering and all of the design that's on the container originally and I decided to use some home decor white chalk paint and I gave it one nice thick coat. Now once it was dry I came in with some matte Mod Podge and I'm actually going to Mod Podge a paper napkin that I found. I had this pack in my craft room. It's a beautiful red diagonal gingham that I thought would be really nice. So I began attaching it very carefully onto the vase and because it's a napkin it's going to be very delicate and you want to take your time and yes it will wrinkle but that's totally fine. I tried to stretch it out with my fingers as smooth as possible and worked in long vertical sections. So I only did this part then I would lift up the napkin and I would add more Mod Podge and I would adhere the next section. I found that doing it this way was the best technique, especially for something so delicate as this. Now what was cool about this is that when I finally got to the very end, it made it just so that I had an almost perfect seam at the very edge. Now for the top of the little vase, I cut different sections and I folded them over and then I Mod Podged them inside of the container. And then I did the same thing on the bottom. Now the bottom was a little bit more tricky and I did have to do a couple of fold overs pretty much because I couldn't fold it all the way in like I could the open top. So I had to do a few creases, but at least it's the bottom of the container and you won't see it. Now I added the Mod Podge on top of the paper on the bottom only and not the rest of the vase because it actually turned it a little bit translucent and I didn't want that. And that was it. Now this isn't something that's gonna last you forever. However, I did think that it would be perfect for like a dinner party, maybe this summer. Let's say you have an event that you wanna coordinate and you don't have a centerpiece and you wanna use some of the napkins from what you're gonna be using. I think that would be a great way to reuse something like this and just give it a usage one more time before you let it go. All right, so for this next piece, I had this wood cut out of the United States and this was actually trash because this was the part that I had took out when my husband and I did this huge lit up sign for our last house. And as I was creating that sign, this part of the map had the little holes that I needed to guide me. And this was probably one of the coolest projects that my husband and I ever did together. The sign was amazing. It had LED lights that lit up and changed different colors. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it above and below so you guys can check it out. But we still had that USA insert and I didn't want to throw it away because I thought I could salvage it and it was finally time to do so. We ended up leaving that sign in the basement for the new homeowners as a gift, but that pool table came with us and it will eventually be in my husband's man cave in this house. So as you can see, it still had those little holes. So the first thing I did was add some painter's tape to the back of the little holes. And then the best wood filler that I personally think is this DAP plastic wood. 
it literally disappears once you add it to your wood because it has the best color match in my opinion. So I continued throughout adding a little bit of painter's tape to each of the holes, adding that wood filler, and then hopefully giving it the impression that it was not a leftover piece from another project. Once the wood filler was dry, I came back in with some sandpaper, smoothed out the top areas of where the wood filler was, and also smoothed out any of the rough edges from the previous cut. So I'm going to go ahead and apologize ahead of time because my workspace is not very big and the attachment where I put my camera isn't very high. So I can't take a shot of the map in its entirety while I'm showing you what I'm doing here. But basically I want to do an American flag on this map. So I was trying to determine where I needed to put the blue section of the flag. So basically here, I was trying to find the center of the United States and also get my point where I am going to have the bottom right corner of the blue rectangle. It took me a couple of tries, but I finally got it. So then after taking into consideration what the height of the map was, I needed to figure out where I needed to put my stripes. So based on the height, I determined that they needed to be two inches high. So what I did was I marked out two inches and what you can do in order to make sure you know where the right placement is of your stripes besides looking at a flag is that the seventh stripe is always going to land on the bottom right corner of the blue section of the flag. So that's kind of what I came off with and that helped me um, figure out how to lay them out. So next I had to create kind of like a stencil for this map and it's rather large so it's not something that I can create out of a machine so I had to come up with an idea of what I could do. So I had this contact paper from Dollar Tree. I've had it for a while and I decided to go ahead and use it. So what I did was I marked down really long stripes on this contact paper that were two inches width and then I cut them along those markings. And for this, I use a straight edge and a box cutter, and it worked pretty well. So next, I traced out the blue part of the flag, and I used my square for this. And once I had that, I knew where to start placing my stripes. Now, for my map, I wanted to create a more of a rustic flag. I didn't want to paint it the flag colors. I wanted to stain the wood to resemble the flag. So for my white stripes, I covered them up with the contact paper because I wanted them to be lighter. And for my darker red stripes, I left those open so that I can stain those areas. Now for the stars, I decided to use my Cricut for this because it would help immensely. And what I did was I screenshot that section of the flag, uploaded it to my Cricut design space, I selected the portion of the image that I wanted to remove and then I selected cut image and then I was able to import it into the design space area and then size it accordingly to what my map size was. Then I basically cut out all of the stars and for this I used that same cheap contact paper from Dollar Tree. Now, if you don't have a Cricut, don't worry. What you can do is you can buy star stickers and just place them on your flag. It'll be a little bit more difficult to line them up perfectly straight, but it can be done.
for my stain, I decided to go with the Varathane Wood Stain in Early American. This is the same wood stain that I use for my Pottery Barn dupes, for my little birds and those candelabras that I created not too long ago. If you haven't seen it, I'll link to it in the description box below as well. I took my time with applying the stain and I made sure to go along the grain of the wood. However, since this is an inexpensive piece of plywood and it's been out in the garage for a while, the stain didn't apply as evenly as I had hoped. However, it's okay. It doesn't bother me as much because it does make the flag look pretty rustic and it didn't affect the final look. Once I was done applying it, I pulled back all of the contact paper. Now for the white stripes, I did want to do a natural stain just so it was nice and stained and finished as well. So I decided just to go with the same brand of Varathane in a natural color. This darkened the stripes a little bit, but they didn't make them disappear. However, I did try it on a couple of the stars at the very top of the map and it kind of all blended in. So I ended up only doing it on the stripes and not the stars. Now I didn't have anything to mount it to the wall because it was just a flat piece of wood. And then I remembered I had these two pieces of frames or canvases from Dollar Tree in my stash. So I pulled those out and removed the canvas. Now pretty much everything you see here that I use for these DIYs, I did not purchase. It was just stuff that I had on hand, including all of the contact paper and the stain and everything. I was really trying to be as resourceful as possible and use what I already had and just kind of try it in new ways and just be very smart in how I applied these. Now these things are the biggest pains in the butt to remove. I don't know if you guys ever tried this. I've done it a few times and it never gets easier. I just wanted to let you guys know. Now what I did was attach these two frames to the back of the sign, making sure that they were nice and level. I used a combination of hot glue and wood glue for this. And then to add a little bit of fun, I decided to use some fairy lights that I already had on hand and wrap them around the frames and then glue the little battery pack to the back of the map. I hung it over my mantle and even though it's not as flashy as the last sign, I do think it was a great way to reuse this piece and not let it go to waste. And since I had the intention of putting the map up on the mantle, I had all this extra ribbon in red and white and blue. So I thought I would add a little decorative piece to the mantle as well. And so I basically just took a styrofoam ball that I had left over and began hot gluing ribbon pieces around it in order to cover it up. I started off with red. Then I added this embroidered ribbon from Dollar Tree as well. And again, it was in my stash. It was left over from previous projects. And then I finished it off with the blue. Now this is a great way to use any leftover ribbon that you have for any occasion and make decorative balls for your home. Or if you have a lot of ribbon, you can create this beautiful American flag like I did in my previous video. I'll link to that if you guys haven't seen that either. I still have that flag and it's definitely one of my favorite DIYs that I've done. Okay, so I do have another patriotic DIY. However, it was not my intention to make a patriotic DIY video. Um, so I'm just going to switch it up really quick and do a container DIY. Now, I don't know about you guys, but we often get packages in the mail. And oftentimes, they're actually really nice boxes that are super sturdy and can be reused. 
So I thought I would give you guys an idea on what you can use. Now I have this grass cloth contact paper that I have used in the past. You guys have seen me use it on several DIYs like a tray, a tray table, and even a little storage box. Well, I still had some, so I might as well use it. As though I began to cover the little box with the contact paper. And I'm not going to lie, this can be a little tricky. You want to go at it as if you are wrapping a very, very delicate gift. The main thing you want to do is make sure that you cover all cardboard edges and corners as best as possible. So every box is different, but for something like this, I just did the side pieces first and then I would come back in and cover those side pieces with the top piece that goes all the way to the bottom to just to kind of cover all those ugly edges and then I would wrap it around the bottom and cut the sides again trying to be very careful with my cuts and be as precise as possible then folding them in to where you can see the least amount of seams and it seemed to work pretty well for this little box now if you want really precise instructions on how to get this decorative box look I did do a tutorial on a much larger box using the same technique and even added a handle and I go over those details much more precise and they're going to be easier to follow so I'll link to that video as well so when I was finally done covering up with the contact paper, I wanted to give it a little bit more character and not just have it look like a box that's covered in contact paper. So remember the piece of leather that I used in my previous container in the beginning of this video? I cut off a sliver of it because it was too wide. Well, I took that little piece and decided to create kind of like a leather latch. And I thought I would share this because if you do have a box that you would like to cover. This is actually a really cute idea to give it a latch without much complication at all whatsoever. So as you saw, I cut the piece into two and then I hot glued the top portion on the top lid as you see right here. And then what you do is hot glue the other piece on both ends and attach it to the other side of the box. Then finally, I added four little feet to the bottom of the box to give it a little bit of elevation. These were again a leftover from a previous project. I was getting really thrifty here. I still had some left over from my Look For Less Pier 1 dupe mirror. And don't worry if you have any questions on any of the products, I'm going to try and list everything that I can that's not trash below in the description box. So for my next trash to treasure, I am going to be using these containers. My husband is a huge fan of these Fiesta Mix nuts. Now, these things can get a little pricey, but they come in this really cute containers. I thought I would put them to good use for some craft supplies in my craft room. Now, after I cleaned them off and removed all of their store labels, I created my own labels on my Cricut and attached them to the clear containers. Now, I did end up using removable vinyl because I thought if I ever changed these out and wanted to use them for something else i can remove the letters and just create new ones so that's why i went ahead and chose to do removable vinyl but you can always use permanent i filled them up and now i have some really good storage pieces for my craft items and i'll just keep adding as they keep coming in
And for my final DIY, I had this really sad, scraggly little American flag. It was already coming undone, as you can see here, and it was left over from previous years. I just obviously don't have the heart to throw it away. So I thought I would reuse it and remove it from the little stick. I was a little worried that I would damage it, but I was able to remove it with minimal damage. And I had these totes that I bought a couple of weeks ago at the Target dollar spot. They were two for $5. I saw them and I always thought that I could do some really nice DIYs with them. So I thought I would use it for this one. I thought the flag would look really cute on it and decided to use fabric Mod Podge. But before I did that, I wanna make sure I protected the other side of the canvas bag. So I added a little circular round um, piece of cardboard and I got my Mod Podge out. Now this Mod Podge is fabric friendly and you can wash it and it's supposed to wash just fine, which is why I'm using it in case it gets dirty. And you just apply it like you normally would any Mod Podge. I did both on the back of the little flag on the canvas and then on top of the flag after I adhered it onto the canvas back. I also thought it would be really nice to add a USA underneath the flag. So I made myself a iron on transfer on my Cricut design space and then adhered it. And then I just used my easy press to set it on to the canvas, making sure that I followed the guidelines on their website so that it doesn't overheat. And that was it for this one. that's it for this video. I hope you all really enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below which one of these ideas was your favorite. As always, make sure to subscribe if you wish to continue getting videos like this. I will see you guys next week with another home decor and DIY video. Until then, adios!